Okay, AP Computer Science A. Uh, this is just a video after you've tried P4E, um, Unit 4 Assignment, after you've tried it, uh, something to help you out. So, but if you haven't tried it really yourself and gotten stuck and frustrated and really tried to scratch your head about it, this is not going to be helpful for you on your next test. It's going to have questions like these on it that you will not get any help for. So um, now I already made a video before where I kind of walked through this. We recreated a lot of the code that's already here. We added some code to make it functional. We added a driver. So, you know, hopefully you've done all that. But let's kind of go back through and, and, and read this again. So a music website keeps track of downloaded music. For each download, the site uses a download object to store the song's title, number of times it's been downloaded. Partial declaration in the download info class is shown here. So this is the download info class. You're not gonna be responsible for adding anything to this, but you gotta use it. Um, <clears throat> it has private instance variables, probably for the name of the song, the title of the song, and the number of times downloaded, which you don't necessarily even need to know that. You just need to know this gives you the title of the song. It does take a title to create one. Um, the number of times downloaded is set to one the very first time it's created. Okay, so that's just that first time. There is a method to later on after it's been created, increment the times downloaded. You don't need to see the, the code for that now. <clears throat> I did add these, which I think just going through the process of showing you what the code would be more fully for this class probably made it a little easier to understand what was going on in this class, but that's not something that you would have on the test. This is all the information you have. So in our code, uh, we created the private instance variables for title and times down downloaded. We created the zero R multi R constructors, probably don't need the zero R constructor. They didn't list it here, so you're not going to use it. You have the multi-hour constructor, which you're probably going to have to use. You probably have to create some downloaded info objects at some point. Uh, they have the get title getter, which they gave us. And this is probably what the code would be. Pretty simple. I went ahead and put get times downloaded. I, I created setter for uh, the title. Not that we need that. Probably won't use it. And I put the code in for increment times downloaded, where you just plus plus the times downloaded. I created two string to print out the title and the times downloaded so that in our driver, <clears throat> we can print it out and see if it worked. So that's that class. So we go to the next class. The next class says, list of downloaded information is stored in a music downloads object. So this is a separate class, separate object that contains a list of downloaded uh, songs. A partial declaration of music downloads class is shown below. Public class downloads, private instance variable, a list, which is like an array list. Um, <clears throat> and we we added this code from my video before. They call it download list. You should use all the same names that they're using here. Don't take any creative liberty to change variable names or change method names. This is a constructor. It constructor doesn't actually take any information. It's zero arg. There is no multi arg constructor. And it just creates a brand new array list with nothing in it. It just initializes this in the constructor, which is what we should do. We should just declare it up here, initialize it in the constructor. And if it's an array list, just create an empty one. Don't need to fill it with nulls or anything like that. Now, this says public download, get download info, takes a title, returns a download info object. That's a big thing that some of you guys might struggle with. It has to return a download info object. Right here, it says returns a reference to the download info object with the requested title, if it exists. So meaning you're gonna put a song in here and if it's already in there, if it's already in this list, it's gonna return the reference to it. Essentially returning like the object, it will return a reference to it. And that's what the user will get if they run this, okay? Returns title, uh, uh, param title the request title that's the parameter the argument it returns a reference to the download info object with the title that matches the parameter title if it exists in the list null otherwise so you can return null if it's not there 
You should not make any changes to download this. Don't remove it. Leave it the way it is, okay? That's a pretty common thing with methods. That's the post condition. What should be true afterwards? Nothing's changed, okay? Now, um, we're going to do that in part A. And then I guess we could just start with that. We're probably going to need that for the other thing, possibly. So let's let's start kind of brainstorming how we're going to do this. We, we have access to the methods from that previous download info class. Um, probably want to use get title, right? Because we want to try and match the current title to the title of this one because all we have is a string for the title. So that's probably the main thing we're going to use here is get title, okay? And, and then we we'll probably want to do like some kind of for loop. I don't know if a for each loop would work, but I mean, we could explore that possibility. For each loops are great for arrays and array lists, traversing them, which is what we're going to do. But sometimes they have limitations. Um, it'd be good at this point in your education of trying to learn for each loops better is to try both ways. See, see how to make them the same. That'll help you just get better at it. Also, learn the limitations of them. <clears throat> so let's take a look. Now they have an example later. So this just lists everything, lists the whole class. And then next page, they go into it again. And this is good to read too before you try and do it. This will help you just fully understand what you're trying to do. Write music, downloads, method, get download info, returns, and reference, download. They're repeating all the information. For example, suppose variable mu web music A refers to an instance of music download. So this is a music downloads object and or references it, refers to it, and that the table below represents the content so far. And we recreated the contents of this in the driver just to get it going. The list contains three download info objects. The object at position zero has a title, hey Jude, download count five, blah, 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 blah. The call webmusica.getDownloadInfoAqualone returns a reference to the object in position two. The call webmusica.getDownloadInfoHappyBirthday returns null because there is no download info object with that title. Okay. They then relist some of the key information from the download info object class that they gave you on the first page. They relist some of the, the, the critical information from the music downloads. This is the same information, but more summarized. And then they, this is what was exactly <clears throat> right here. This information that was about the comments leading up to the method are re put here. And now you get to do it. So let's see if we can start to think about you know, what our what our um, strategy is going to be here. Um, let's see. So, uh, you know, this is a good way. You know, in the future, you're not going to be able to type these up. So, I mean, we could do we could just write. You know, the header was already given to you. So, uh, public. Um, it says, you know public download. I mean, I guess you wouldn't have to rewrite this on the AP test. It would be right where you're going to write your answer, but I'm going to write it down here. And let's try to first use some pseudo code. And that's maybe as far as I'm going to take it with you guys. I'm going to let you guys figure out the details later. The hard part I think is the approach. Okay. So um, they're giving us a title and we need to compare it to each title in, in the current, um, array list in this class. We need to compare them against everyone in download list. So, and it did say here, um, I think earlier that songs can only be listed once. So you should take the assumption that there's only one. And then once you find it, you should be done. Right. So you want to do some kind of for loop that goes through, um, goes through the whole download list. Right. 
right? You can try for each loop also. Now in here, you want to do an if, probably, right? You want to say if, you know, the current download list, uh, you know, what, how, how do we do it for arrays? Download list dot get index. Now that gives you the current download info object, but you want its title dot get title. And that's the thing you're using from that previous method, get title. And then you want to compare it. Now the, this is a string, right? And it's an object. So we should use dot equals, not, not double equals dot equals. And then we could put this guy in here and compare it, right? So if they are the same, um, then well, we found it. We should return. We should return that reference. Okay. Else, they said to return null. So we just return null. Don't put quotes around. It. It's not a string. You just return null. The absence of an object. And that's it. So you can have these returns inside of an if, and then that's the thing that actually, you don't actually have to make the for loop end anymore. Because as soon as you hit a return in, a, in code, boom, the method ends, it returns it, nothing else happens. Now I'm gonna tell you right now, um, what you should do is you should test this on, well, I don't know. Um, let's see. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to think for a second here. I was thinking if you're going to get a null pointer exception, if you, well, I don't know if we have to worry about that. Let's see. It says a lot of times it'll say, uh, what we have to worry about. So um okay so i don't know yeah i don't know now <clears throat> you know actually there's something wrong with this because if it doesn't find it on the first spot and returns null that's no good because we want to actually get have a chance to look through the whole list before it decides to return null so after the for loop is when we don't need to even do a check because by the way, you'd be like, well, what if we found it? How do we do, should we check if we found it? Should we create another Boolean to keep track of it if we, if we found it or not? No, because as soon as you find it, you're going to return, right? The only reason it's going to get to here is if it never found it. Because once it finds it, it returns and the rest of the code ends. This right here, you just say return null. That's it. Because you know for sure that if the code gets all the way through the for loop and gets to here after the for loop, that means this never happened in your code. Never happened. Okay. So uh, that's a lot of help for that one. The next one says, uh, let's see. So if you can find it. So the next one, this is back on the second page of the sign still, I think. It says uh, public void update downloads. Okay, public void. So it doesn't return anything. Doesn't return anything. But you can still say return, but don't return anything. Or you don't even have to say return. <clears throat> it takes an array list of strings. So these are new downloads essentially, right? Update Updates download list. So the download list has all the current downloads in it. This is going to update it with information from titles. Titles is a list of song titles. So these are new titles, and you're going to use these new titles to update. It says post condition. There are no duplicate titles. Okay, so if the title is already there, you just have to increment its time. No entries were removed. You shouldn't get rid of it. All songs and titles are represented in download lists. So anything that's in here better be in it when you're done. 
post condition. For each existing entry in download list, the download count is increased by the number of times its title appeared in title. So every time the title shows up again, you increment it. The order of the existing entries in download list is not changed. So they should have the same order they had originally. If a new song pops up, it gets added on to the end. The first time object with a title from titles is added downloads, it is added to the end of the list. New entries in download list appear in the same order in which they appear in titles, meaning you should just go in order through the array list. Don't go backwards. For each new entry in download list, the download count is equal to the number of times this title appeared in title. So the first time it's going to be one, and then if it shows up again, it gets incremented again. So this is what we're responsible for. Um, then we should probably go ahead and read the... Um, we should read the, the example. So they give us a much more thorough explanation because you still might not be get it. Write music downloads method updates, which takes a list of song titles as a parameter for each title. Method updates download list either by increment, either by incrementing download object at the same time or adding a new, that's a big thing to circle on these new, that means you gotta create one which better mean you better use the word new when you create it, like a new object, the constructor, with that title and download count of one to the end of the list. Now, when we create these, if you go back to our original first page, they get a one at the beginning. When a new download object is added to the list, the order of the already existing entries downloads remains unchanged. So here's an example. Web Music V refers to instance. So Hey Jude's 5, Soul Sisters 3, Aqualung's 10. That's what we have already. Then... The variable list song titles has been defined as lights, aqualung, soul sister, go now, lights again, soul sister again. They call web music B update download. So this is being called on this object. We're going to update it with this list of songs. Results in the following download list with increment download counts for the objects with title, soul sister, and aqualung. It also has a new download info object uh, with the title lights, with download count of two, and another download info object with the title go now, download count one, the order of already existing entries. Hey Jude, Soul Sister, Aqualung better be the first three. We don't get rid of any. We got new song lights. So when when we hear it created is, you had to create the object and add it to the array list. It's one the first time. Then Aqualung bumps this up to 11. And then Soul Sister bumps this up to four. Then Go Now is a new song, so we got to create it, and this increments is one. Then we hit Lights again, it increments this one up to two, and then we hit Soul Sister again, this one goes up to, it was three, then it was four, and now it's five. And now you're done. Now you don't have to return this because this is the private instance variable in the class, so we're updating it. We don't, we're not responsible for returning it or anything, but it does make these changes. So then you, get another summary of the important information and you get another rundown of the, the comments in the code and then this is where you're gonna write your code. So let's see if we can think of how we should attack this and how we, you know, we need to use the information from part A possibly because we wanna see if the song is there yet. Well, that's the, that's the git download, uh, that's the, get download info method that we just created. And even if you didn't create it and you, you could still use it as if it works the way it's intended to work and get full credit for part B, even if you didn't got stuck on part A. So this method is public void update downloads list string and we already we typed this up from the earlier video so it's kind of this is all there already but it's good to try and write these by hand because that's what you're going to do on the ap test and that's what you're going to be doing on my test very soon in fact one of your, on your next test one more will be handwritten okay so <clears throat> what are we going to do here we have the download list um private instance variable in this class, right? The music downloads class. So we're gonna, and then we have this new list of songs. So what I think we should do is probably go through this list of songs one at a time 
And in each song, see if it's in the download list. Now, some of you might be tempted to create another for loop, which could work, except that you're recreating the code from part A at this point, and you shouldn't. You will lose credit, even if it works perfectly. I'm just telling you, that's the way the AP test is graded. So we probably need some kind of for loop. And, you know, again, you have to kind of consider, is it okay? Could I could I get away with a for each loop? Try it. See if it see if it works. Hopefully by now you're starting to get, you know, the hang, hang of some of the limitations. My pen is running out, so I'm gonna use pencil now. Okay. So probably some kind of for loop, you know, or we could try for each loop and see if it works. We're gonna go through these each, okay, and then um, so we're going to go through the whole titles array list. Okay. I got to turn down the brightness so you can see my pencil, I guess. Let's see if this works. Doesn't seem to be working. Okay. Let me get a new pen. Okay. Got a new pen. Titles. Um, okay. So we want to go through that. And we want to first see if it's already in the array list because we have two situations. Either it's not there, it, either it is there, and so we need to increment its downloads, or it's not there and we have to create it for the very first time. So um, if now we want to use our method that we just got done doing, the method we just did said if the song is there, it returns it to us, which could be perfect. We could use that to access that object um, or returns null, which would then indicate that it's not there and we could do the right thing. So we could treat, we could go with either case first, but I think we have to say, okay, we have to say, um, now since we're within the class, we just call, we just call the method get download info, get if get download info. Okay, this is the method we just wrote. Oh wait, yeah, get download info. And then it takes it takes a title. So we could say titles dot get index. Right? <clears throat> I think we can pull this off with a for each loop. So I would try it. That's part of the deal. If you're getting help from me right now, then I'm asking you to do a little extra. Get download info, uh, titles that get index. So this is gonna either, this is return a download info object reference, or it's gonna return null. Now, I don't know exactly which download info object it's gonna return, so I can't say equal equals dot equals or something, but I think null is, is the easier one to identify very clearly. And you could say if it equal equals null, or you could say not equals null. You could go with that. Now if it if it if it equal equals null, then what we need to do is create a new keyword new and add it to the download list. So we could say, you know, download list is the private instance variable in this class. It has all the Got to remember that's I think a lowercase download list dot add. That's how we add it for array list. And then in here, I mean we could do this in a couple steps. We could break up this work, or we could probably pull it off in one step. So we're going to add a new download info object. So this is where we have to go back to the original method on the first page and use the constructor. We need to create a download info with the title. It will get set to one automatically the first time. But we have to say new, new download info object, and it takes a string. So we need to put this, this title right here, titles.get index in there and close all our parentheses. I think there's like three parentheses there. Um, Okay, so if that, ha okay, so there we go. That that would add it if it's if it's null. 
okay? Um, else, see, like I said, this is the easier thing to identify. Does it equal equal null or not equal null? That's the easy check. Trying to, if, you know, is it there or not there? Comparing it to null is the easiest way to identify that. <laughs> we could switch up the order. You could say not null and then do what you do here. Now, if it's equal to, to null, that means it wasn't there. We had to create a new one, put it in there. Otherwise, then it is there, and we need to just use increment times downloaded from that first, first class to bump up its times downloaded. But we have to, again, do, I think, get, and I mean, I mean there's lots of ways. We could break this up. We could say um, we could create a variable. Um, uh, of download info type, we could say uh, found and then equals get download info titles dot get index. Okay, we have to run it again. We got to run this method again. We ran it first just to see if it was there or not. Now we got to run it again to actually get it. And then we could assign it to like a variable if you want. You could skip this variable step. And then that variable is referencing that same song that we found. And so uh, I called it found. So now we need to run the method increment times downloaded on it. Right, and we don't need to return anything. This method will run its course, and it'll it'll finish. And it's not supposed to return anything specific. If it was, uh, Java would have a problem compiling. But um, this is it. So I mean, the lines of code for Part A really came down to uh, one, two three, four lines of code. And this one was one, two, three, four. I could have done this in one line, five lines of code. So that's a total of nine lines of code for parts A and B. And that's including else as being a line of code. Um, so there you go. I hope this helps. And I hope you tried it really hard to begin with. Um, and I hope you're more ready for a problem that can involve things like this in the future.